first review of the year. Uh, first, I would like to thank everybody who inquired on my health because on the last episode I said I was a little sick. I'm sick. And I did indeed receive a lot of tweets, um, emails, etc., etc., etc. Even some of you did reach out and um, ask me if I needed a, a doctor. So, especially to you, I want to say thank you. Uh, now, as the very first review of this year, I thought I was going to start with something really nice and special. Even though I'm not sure how I'm gonna top it for the next 52 weeks in coming, but today we are reviewing the Maximus 10 formula from Asus. For the ones who've been following me, you know that I've plunged into the Asus world with a formula edition, the formula 8. And not only is it a nostalgically and emotionally attaching motherboard to me, but it is also, in my opinion, the motherboard where Asus has the most fun. By all means, this is not a budget motherboard. Uh, it is the last stop or the first stop to crazy town, depending on how you take it. But is it enough? Is this worth an upgrade? Is the Maximus 10 formula worth the upgrade from its predecessor, the Maximus 9 formula? That's where the real question is. Well, I will be delighted to answer this question. But without any further ado, roll that intro. Alright, so let's go ahead with the unboxing. So here is our motherboard that we are going to put away for now. And here we have our usual coupon driver's manual and in addition, a cool looking rock plastic logo. For some reasons, we have an M.2 solid stud drive screw and screw razor right underneath it. Next come a CPU socket protector, our dual band Wi-Fi antenna, a two-way SLI bridge, a 3.1 to 2.0 USB cable, an RGB extension cable, an M.2 SSD vertical mount and its screw and screw razor, a CPU installer, three pairs of SATA cable, a rock coaster, an RGB addressable cable extension, and finally a bridge for our front panel connectors. All right, as usual, let's start with the obvious. This is an ATX form factor motherboard, meaning it is 30.5 cm long and 24.4 cm wide. The other side of our motherboard is almost entirely protected by a backplate, which will protect our logic board from undelicate builders. Our CPU socket is an LG1151 version 2. It is always good to remember that the Z370 chipset is not compatible with 6th and 7th generation Intel processors. This CPU socket can only support supports the latest 8th generation Intel processors, the so-called Coffee Lake processors. Let's take a look back. We have a built-in water block which will keep all our capacitators as cool as they can be. The water block is produced and manufactured by EKWB and that is a feature which we will usually only find on formula motherboards. Memory-wise, we have the usual dual channel configuration which can support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM overclockable to 4133 megahertz. As usual, make sure to accordingly choose your RAM models. Storage-wise, our motherboard can accommodate up to two M.2 solid-state drives, one in a vertical position right here and one in an horizontal position right under the chipset heat shield. Talking of which, the Z370 chipset is of course opt-in ready and that does mean that both our M.2 solid-state drive can swap and transfer data up to 32 gigabytes per second, of course, in optimal conditions because with this kind of speed your models will heat up and probably thermostrol. And that is why Asus has provided a thermopad on the other side of our chipset heat shield. And indeed, it should help quite a bit. The vertical one, since open to air, should also be able to benefit from the existing fan in your build to keep as cool as possible. Export-wise, we have six third-generation PCIe Expresses, three single-slot single speed, and three 16 slots with multiple speeds. The first and closest one to your processor is the only PCIe Express which can run up to 16 full bus speed. Hence, if you're going with only one video card, this is where you want it to be placed for optimal performances. But if you decide to go for a dual GPU configuration, then both our PCIe Expresses will be sharing their bandwidths, meaning that they will both each run up to eight full bus speed. The last PCIe Express is capped up to four bus speed. And that is why our two first ones have been metallically reinforced for CR, the one most likely to be supporting our massive video cards, and that is of course a great move coming from Asus. Time to go to our IOs. Uh, for the ones who've been watching me before, you know that I'm a big fan of uh, pre-mounted IO shields, and um, 
it's not only in higher end motherboards such as a Formula Edition, but recently Asus has been upgrading its entry level motherboard such as the Maximus 10 Hero Edition, uh, which I have had the pleasure, I have had, the, I had, I have had the pleasure to review last week and that you should take a look if you did not do so just yet. Back on our IOs, starting from the left we have our BIOS and clear CMOS button, our AC dual band Wi-Fi adapter, a 1.4B HDMI and 1.2 display port for our integrated GPU, no less than 4 second generation USBs and 4 3.1 first generation USBs all capable to transfer data up to 5 gigabit per second. We also have a type A and type C 3.1 second generation USB plugs and they both can also transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second. Next come our 1 gigabit search protected Ethernet plug and finally our Supreme FX audio channels and its optical outlet. SATA wise and as usual we have our 6 3.0 SATA connectors which can all transfer data up to 6 gigabit each. On board connector wise we have one USB 2.0 connector, one 3.1 first generation connector and our usual audio front panel and front panel buttons connectors. Before going any further let's note that we also have a 3.1 second generation front panel connector right here which can connect any type C front panel adapters if available. All right, so so far we've covered what we usually do on any other motherboard, but here is a more enthusiastic part of it. Of course, Formula Edition are all about water cooling systems. That's why there is an integrated water block on it. And you know, um, I've been using it a few times and that is really a cool water block to have, especially if you're looking for more intricate, more complex custom water cooling system. And to keep in topic, we have no less than seven fan connectors as well as a water pump connector. We also also have more specific options such as a water flow connector and our water flow in and water flow out detectors. Finally we have a bunch of built-in thermal sensors as well as some externals. So again this motherboard is really aimed at custom water cooling builders not the everyday guy who's gonna go for a big fan on top of a very the CPU. The formula makes it very very clear that this is only for enthusiasts. A good enthusiast board always has a few soldered buttons on and in our case we have our usual start and reset button, a save boot and retry button and a somewhat awkwardly placed memory ok button. I say awkwardly because I would prefer it to be next to the dual channel memory slot as in the Maximus 10 Hero. But wait, where is a QLED screen? Well as in more expensive motherboards such as a Zenith Extreme and the Rampage 6, uh, the QLED screen has been replaced by an OLED screen right here. So of course it will communicate all the usual error codes which will guide us through the troubleshooting of our build, but it also shows a variety of information such as live CPU temperatures and some cool icons and funky looking logos. All right, so now is the time to go in the more aesthetic part of our motherboard. And as in any Maximus lineup, this motherboard is Aura compliant. So for the ones who do not know what Aura is, uh, first check the video I made about this. It's a very nicely done one. And basically it is a, a software based RGB sync effect that Asus came up with, which will sync all the different RGB of your or a compliant components through your build and gives that really cool looking glow that well we all crave for and look at that so of course we have our first RGB strip hidden and there's a Maximus 10 logo a couple of them at the PCIe fit one under the ROG logo of our chipset heat shield and finally right under our start and reset button so yeah really 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 good looking motherboard but that's not it of course, on this motherboard, we also have four different RGB Aura compliant connectors for our LED exports. Two of them are the classic RGB exports and the two others, the ones with three pins, uh, are for our addressable cables. And an addressable cable simply means that you can individually custom light every single LED on your LED strip. Very cool, very cool indeed. In conclusion, well, uh, let me start as usual with the price. This board uh, will run you 450 US dollars, which is a little more than the previous Maximus 10 formula. And you know, uh, th that's a dilemma for me. First and foremost, if you are not into water cooling, 
don't go there. Uh, you can get the same level of enthusiastic uh, yumminess on a Formula 10 Hero for uh, yeah, half the price, right? $240, $250. So now, if you don't have a real use and if you're not into complex custom water cooling or uh, want to showcase some kind of really fancy looking motherboard or stuff like that, stay away from the formula. But if you are an enthusiast on a budget and you don't want to go to the Extreme Edition, right? And you don't want to go on an X299 based motherboard such as a Rampage 6, which does cost 600 bucks or so, then that's the last stop before crazy town. This is the best bet you got. For $450, you will have all, really all uh, the premium item that a very, very expensive motherboard will bring you. Again, the Extreme Edition will run you, I'm sure when it comes out, about six to $700, so yeah, 300 bucks more. Um, and if you're gonna go on the X299 range, the processor itself costs a fortune and yeah the board is also around six seven hundred dollars so there is a very strong case uh, to go for the Formula 10 if you are in this market range and there's no real critics I can make about these boards other than the pricing but this aside there is one other question I'm asking uh, which is more fundamental and not really regarding Asus but the Intel chipset when you're looking at those kind of prices are, is there a solid foundation to break from the Maximus 9 Z270 best chipset to Maximus 10 Z370 best chipset? And you know, my opinion is uh, if you're really limited by the performances uh, of a KB Lake i7700K, then yes. But if you're not and you're pretty happy with the performances, you know, you could just wait for another Intel generation and the Maximus 11, it really is up to you. But if you are going on Coffee Lake, the eighth Intel uh, CPU generation, and you're going for custom water cooling, there is no board is gonna look as good as a Formula 10. Even the Extreme Edition don't have uh, this very cool, um, you know, water block on the VRM and the capacitator. So there is really a unique effect to it. Well, that was a lot of talking. All right, so uh, yeah, yeah.